All right. Hello, everybody. You will come once again. We are so sorry for the technical issues uh, yes. that we had. We we're supposed to kick start at seven. Yeah. But uh, we had a little bit of issue, but it's all sorted oh, out yes. now. Please <laughs> forgive us. You are welcome once again. I'm sure the first session was fully uh. power, power, power <laughs> packed. Okay. Um, so we know that we have parents joining us for this uh, session. Yes. We have parents from all over all the over. world. And we are super excited uh, yes. to have you with us this evening because we have the foremost parenting oh, yeah. bishop the parenting of our bishop. time. Can, can you tell me something about Wendy? Oh. You know when I think about Wendy, I just oh. think about fire. Oh my God. Fire, 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 fire. fire, 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 fire. fire. <laughs> Now you, you will listen to her oh, yes. and I'm sure it's going to be an amazing time oh, for you. Yes. But can we tell you a secret? If you do nothing with what you receive, nothing will happen oh, for yes. you. So we implore you for everything you are going to hear. Make sure like me, you have your pen and your jotter ready yes. to take notes. Ready, ready, and not ready. just stop at taking notes. Stand up and do something with what you you will hear oh yeah so it's going to be an another time an amazing time with the foremost parent coach Aaron wendy and Michelle, wendy oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. we are sure that wendy is in the house right now oh, yeah. and she's super super ready for us okay? okay um we would have loved to take feedback from your voice but this is a parent <laughs> session so we just go straight to the time with the parents all right we've known wendy for over a period of time and she has been a great blessing doing amazing work like you said i don't even know the word to use and describe her but the first time we met her we are like who is this woman with so much fire, fire. The knowledge uh -uh. the testimonies from her work we blow your mind let's take wendy's profile and then she'll come up right away wendy ologe is a foremost parent coach in africa who believes that her calling to parents will change the next generation of people in Africa. She is the founder of the Intentional Parent Academy, a coaching outfit dedicated to equipping parents and intending parents to intentionally raise their children positively, especially in the face of our decaying societal values. Wendy aims to lead parents with everything it takes to raise an excellent child mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically. Because she believes that parenting the next generation better is the way to have a better world tomorrow. She helps parents parent with peace and calm. She believes that parenting isn't about tip and hacks, but a process that walks a child through the 18 years of their lives with a parent as a guide. The Intentional Parent Academy offers several programs and courses that helps parents run through a process that helps them raise their children intentionally. TIP Academy runs the famous Inner Circle Program for Parents, a program that takes parents through a yearly process and that have impacted lives and families for generations to come. She is the author of many best-selling parenting books, including Connect to Correct, Working Your Child Through Puberty, The Discipline That Works, and From Yelling to Come, and 15 other parenting guides. Her books and parenting guides have sold over 150,000 copies across the nations of the earth. She also runs an online community on Facebook called The Intentional Parent with almost 100,000 members as of today. Via this group, Facebook selected her among 100 others in the globe to be a global leader leading communities for the circles in Abuja. Facebook selected her group to flag of the first parenting subscription group in Africa. Wendy has spoken on many stages, including being interviewed by the biggest Christian TV network in Africa, Christian Broadcasting Network, CBN, on their famous TV program, The 700 Club, twice. This interview has been aired on both international and national TV stations, including CBN, which is the largest Christian television network in the world, and Channels Television, Nigeria. In October 2019, Wendy represented Africa at the Facebook Global Parenting Panel at their headquarters in California, United States. Her group, The Intentional Parent, 
was recognized as one of the most relevant and engaging parenting groups in Africa in 2019 by Facebook. On 1st of October 2020 at the Facebook Community Summit, Wendy was named by Facebook team as one of the people building relevant groups globally. Wendy is also the convener of famous online parent conference, the Intentional Parent Conference, a global annual program for parents to help transfer their generations to come. In 2021, she was named one of the top female coaches in the world by the Divine Purpose Magazine United States of America and was featured on Fox, NBC, ABC and CBS News USA. Wendy is also the executive director at Smart Office, a corporate organization with a focus on developing businesses through capacity building, provision of serviced workspaces, and hostels for students. Her work experience includes years in international non-governmental organizations with over 10 years of experience in USIAD. Leading projects, Wendy also has experience in the banking sector. She likes to refer to her husband as the governor and a god. Their union of over 12 years is blessed with two biological children, a set of twins, and one foster daughter who is married. Wendy Ologi, founder the Intentional Parents Academy, speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Up. I'm sure it's network. She's trying to come up. Yes. I'm sure you heard that profile. <laughs> Wendy is not yet to joke. <laughs> she has come with so much fire. So much. And she will be talking to us, speaking to us on the reformed parent. Yes. Oh, so not every parent. Is um qualified <laughs> to parent a boy. I'm telling you, a, a reformed boy. A reformed boy. So it must be a, a reformed, reformed parent, parent parenting a, a reformed, reformed boy. boy. And trust me, you have a reformed parent coach. Oh yeah. To teach a reformed parent what it means to parent a reformed boy. Oh yes. Um, I don't know if Wendy is in the room already. I think she's having network issues, and she's going to join us soon. She's going to join us soon. I think Wendy has been doing a lot of work, you know, in the Intentional Parents Academy, especially I work with the parents at the inner circle. You can, we've heard, we have seen amazing testimonies of her work, how she has um, really, really, really equipped so many families, equipped so many parents, you know, and have brought them to this limelight. She has done an amazing, an amazing work, and we really celebrate her for all she is doing. And I know she's going to be coming in with so much fire, yeah. so much fire this uh, in this session. All right. You know, and I'm just looking forward to hearing what a reformed parent will we, we, we be. I, I, I'm do. really looking forward yeah. to that because, you know, one of the things I keep hearing from Wendy is um, you don't parent from the place of fear. Mm. And, you know, in the 21st century, <laughs> parenting the boy in the 21st ah. century is no child is no child at play at all. all and if you're not careful you will discover that you are parenting out of fear mm -hmm. if you're not careful your son is a suspect mm -hmm. everything he does is suspicious mm -hmm. he says a word is suspicious mm -hmm. he's in the room is suspicious mm -hmm. he's out to play you are suspicious mm -hmm. of him so you know I, I keep hearing her say you parent from the place of knowledge. From the place of knowledge. And, you know, I can't wait to gather this knowledge. I, I can't wait. To I can see. We can see when they're longer, and we can see, yes, can see the, the, the fire already. Yes, we sir. can see the fire already. Mama Cathedra, the apostle of our time. The apostle of our time. The apostle over the parenting commission. <laughs> we celebrate you. <laughs> we celebrate All right, you, Mama. King in your future. and root you guys are awesome I, I want us in the comment section to share the fire emojis you know me as the fire coach we like the fire emojis share the fire emojis for these two people they are amazing they are wonderful 
one of the things that keep people for me one of the things that um i i actually um you know um put up with is consistency these two people have shown consistency many of the times if you're not consistent you hardly be able to work with me consistency is one thing that you know it, it is a place of kings whether you like it or not so give it up for king Gebuka and king Groot. we don't have queens in our system we only have kings and that's who they are thank you so much for putting this up um i really do appreciate the both of you you guys are awesome i am proud to be associated with save the boys initiative i am proud to be part of this system year in year out i am proud to say that these are the people that have mentored i am really proud today and i, I can't i can't even be prouder if there's anything like that thank you again and welcome to the reformation 2020 who is here who is here all right Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm trying to log in using my system. And in the meantime, I said, let me just come live using my phone. And so I'm going to just switch. Immediately you see the second um, um, login. Please just bring me up on the stream, all right? Um, because I, I would like to have a full-blown version of um, what it is that I'm doing. Um, you know, I was listening to Ebuka while Ebuka was talking. Ebuka was spitting raw fire. And, you know, as it was spitting raw fire, I was in the car and, you know, my husband was driving. I was, I was thinking I was going to come live while I was in the car. I said to myself, I cannot speak like this in this car. No, 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 no. It, it won't be feasible. I need to sit. I need to sit to be able to have this session. All right. And, you know, I just prayed one short prayer. And I said, it's not going to be ready until I get in. And as soon as I was getting in, that's when we were ready. So thank you so much for your patience. Thank you, parents. Share this link with your friends and your family. I'm sure if it's Bob Risky that is talking, you're going to be sharing this link by now. So I am sure that you have shared this link on your status or your wherever it is that you are sharing all of those stories. You know how you are, you scream and say, come and see what Bob Risky is doing. You know, do the same way today. Shout out, shout out, shout out to the world and tell them that we're having the International Boys Conference. On Saturday, we're going to be live. I will be live. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be, you know, be, you know, it's going to be an amazing time. You don't want to miss it. All right. So let's go straight into the conversation of the day. Today, we're talking the reformed parent. And I'm speaking to parents. I love, love, love speaking to parents. I'm out of the stream. Okay, great. I love speaking to parents. And it's one of the things that, you know, I always all the time want to do if you wake me up in the night the first thing i want to talk about is parenting in fact i breathe and i sleep and you know wake up in, about parenting and today the topic i was giving was a topic that gave me a lot of you know um a lot of um thoughts and I've, I've sat on this topic for days now thinking about the reformed parent the question is who is the reformed parent the reformed parent what exactly is reformation i tell you where reformation itself as a thing even started that the, what made reformation really popular was the protestant reformation the protestant reformation was a religious reformation it was a religious movement that swept through europe in 1500 so that was when the Christian, that's what gave birth to Protestants. There was a, a system of reformation. Martin Luther King led the people and said, you know what? Whatever it is that is happening now, it's not what we want. So they revolted and it resulted to the break off of the Catholic Church. And then gave birth to the protestants one of the things i would like you to take note is the causes why it, it actually happened now the name is used collectively to refer to many religious groups that separate from the roman catholic due to the difference in doctrine now the question will be how did what are the things that caused the reformation remember we're talking about the reformed parent. What caused this reformation in the first place? 
There are three things that cause reformation. Number one was indulgence. Number two was power mismanagement. Number three was corruption in the church. Martin Luther King rose up and said, no, this is not going to be happening. We're going to take this thing. We're going to you know, do it in a better way. This is not what we want for the church. And then the fight, the quest for actually reforming the church started to happen. This is the same thing that is happening in our homes today. The reformed parents. Many of us are actually, you know, kicking for reformation. And one of the reasons why we started the reformation agenda is because we have seen indulgence in the family system. We have seen power mismanagement in the family system. We have seen corruption in, in the family system. So it's the same thing. So we are the Martin Luther King of the church in the parenting industry today. We're screaming, we're shouting, we're telling you that these things are happening and we need a change over indulgence. We're having families where children are now being overindulged. And we're saying, no, this is not what it's supposed to be. We want a reformation. We are screaming for reformation. All right? Ebuka, please help me write, um, help me um, add me to with the other system so that I will be, I'll be there. Thank you. All right, great. So the reformation that we're currently having is, you know, a lot of in, in, indulgement, right? So we're having, you know, indulging over indulging children. You tell parents, oh, your children are supposed to be able to do this, do that. You see them say, no, our children should not. They should not stand up from here. They should not do anything. We are screaming and we are asking for information because of overindulgence. Number two, power mismanagement. There's a problem of power mismanagement in the homes. People who have the power, the parents, are mismanaging it. The children are suffering because of power mismanagement. And we're saying, no, it shouldn't be like that. Just like the church was corrupt. There was power mismanagement in that time. The Pope became too powerful. And Martin Luther King said, no, there is only one source of power, and that's from God. And the same thing I'm telling you today, there is only one source of power, even you as a parent, and that is God, the owner of the person you are parenting. The power doesn't belong to you. You are only a guide. You are not the owner of the child. And for mis power mismanagement, we are screaming and saying that we need the reformation. The third one is corruption in the home. There's a lot of corruption in the home today. You are saying one thing. You're doing another thing. Your children are confused. They don't understand what is happening. There's corruption in the home. We're screaming for corruption in the home. Today, you're paying, uh, uh, um, you're paying people for common entrance. We have moved from Waek. It's now common entrance. We're beginning to give people a lot of, oh no, I don't want my children to suffer. I want, we do not want children to suffer gang. Uh, you need to pay your way through a child. Your child are corrupt. Your children, your, you yourself, you're corrupt. You're, you're putting up a system of corruption and your children are buying it. I, I bring you good news from the Inner Circle Parents of TIP Academy. They said, I should tell you, when this session was about to start, level three specifically, that their children will not marry the people who are not being parented well. It's not when you finish, you say, we're looking for one good girl for my son. If you want, don't bring your son for this conference, eh? So that when we finish, you say, hey, hey, my son is 20 something. I'm looking for one good girl. Once he marries a good girl now, his head will be correct. Afonko. We are not giving our daughters to anybody that is not being raised well today. And I would say, we will not finish maintaining our white. And another, you will bring somebody who have not maintained white and tell us to come and go. No, we will not. We will marry like the days of the Bible. Because that's what it has come to. A lot of corruption. The kind of music we are playing, 
These children are listening to it. We are asking for reformation. Martin Luther King led this reformation process. And one of the things that he placed emphasis on was on the knowledge using the scriptures. And this is what we're saying today. What is the reformation about? Now, reformation in the church had principles. Reformation in the church had principles. And the principles were based on the three, you know, they called it the three, um, the, the trials principle of reformation. Sola script, Scriptura, Sola Gratia, and Sola Fides. It means only scripture, only grace, and only faith. Every successful endeavor, every successful endeavor it, it succeeds on principles. Stop telling me you can do whatever it is that you like. Stop telling me you can parent however it is that you want. When you're done parenting how you want, we're going to create a tribe and we marry only from our tribes. There, is, there are principles. This reformation needed a principle for it to happen. Only scripture, only grace, and only faith. Reformation comes with principles. There is no agenda that has ever succeeded in life without a principle. Part of that principle is what we teach in the academy. The principle of how to raise kings. There is a template. Anybody who told you that there's no template to raising children lied to you. Go and ask questions. There is a way to raise a child. The template. And which one is the principle? The principle is raising kings. That's the principle of reformation. Raising kings. I heard Ebuka. Ebuka said, you want to be a king, you want to just behave anyhow. Kings do not throw themselves. Kings do not throw themselves in the mud. You need to understand that. And if you understand that, you're not going to be asking your children to do the things that you yourself will not be able to deliver on. What are the principles of this raising kings that we're talking about? These principles are hinged on knowledge. They are hinged on skills. They are hinged on value system. What knowledge do you have? There's a scripture that I'm bringing to you today. Righteousness does not remove the consequences of a faulty foundation. You can raise your child today with a faulty foundation. The consequences of a wrong faulty foundation can never be taken away because you're righteous. They can be taken away because you're righteous. So you can pray, which is very good. And if you don't acquire the knowledge to be able to raise the person you're raising. I'm talking to mothers of boys. Stop raising children who cannot drive and you wake up and you say, oh, uh, with time, with time, we're, we're going to, we're, once he marries, he will be complete. Once, once he marries, everything will be okay. We won't give our daughters. We're not giving. For those of us who have daughters, we've decided that we're not giving our daughters to children, to boys who are useless. We're not. Our daughters would rather remain unmarried. So raise, train your sons. That's what we're here to say. There is nothing a good person can do when everything falls apart. I'm reading scriptures. I'm not speaking from with my own mind. No, I'm not telling you feeble, feeble tales. Psalms chapter 11 verse 3. It says that if the foundation, if the foundation is wrong, what can the righteous do? Righteousness does not remove the consequences of a faulty foundation. Holiness does not remove the consequences of a faulty, faulty foundation. When a foundation is faulty, you are going to bear the consequences of it. And that's why Psalm 82 verse 2 said, they don't know and understand, so they wander in darkness. That's part A. You, you can't give what you don't have. What knowledge do you have? Raising children is anchored on knowledge in the times today. That's why the Bible said that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. You're running kitty kitty kata kata because you do not have the stability. You do not understand. And you know, the fact that you saw the mistakes of your parents does not automatically guarantee that you correct those mistakes. 
I'll give you, you know, examples from scriptures so that you will say, you will say that, ah, what did she say? Eli. Eli didn't fail. In fact, a, a year that apparently did not say, she had it this morning. Eli didn't fail because he didn't pray. He failed because he didn't understand what it took to raise a child. He didn't ask questions. And after the failure of Eli, you know what happened? Eli raised Samuel. Do you know that Samuel made the same mistake? Even though Samuel saw the mistake Eli made. You will repeat the same mistake if you, are, if you do not acquire the necessary knowledge, no matter how you recognize that your parents have made mistakes. So recognizing that they've made mistakes is not the issue. <laughs> what have you been able to replace it? Because it is said that parenting is reflecting. Parenting characteristics is reflective. So it's going to reflect. It's going to continually reflect. Lack of knowledge is part of what is making us indulge our children. We're indulging them. We're afraid. You're afraid because you lack knowledge. Today, I was sharing in a session with the parents in the academy, in our academy, and I said to them that fear is a wrong uh, um, um, language of instruction. Fear is a wrong language of instruction. You don't, you don't instruct with fear. When you instruct with fear, your, your person, the person you are instructing doesn't actually get the message. We're talking about safety. Because of fear, we're indulging our children. That, remember that I said that indulgence was one of the reasons Martin Luther King asked for a reformation from the Catholic Church to the Protestants. That's what we're asking for. We are asking that what it is that is, is being done is no longer tenable. It's no longer something we can use in the 21st century. It is no longer, it, it's not going to help our children. Any parenting plan you have today that does not give you insight to 30 years from today is a failed parenting plan. Do you know that 30 years today, we're going to have more black people on planet Earth than we have white people? Do you know that 30 years from today, we're going to have more people who come from homes of, of um, LGBTQ homes than we ever have? So if you are afraid, believe you me, nothing is going to change. You will just be afraid and nothing. You won't be able to do anything. Fear is not a good language of instruction. You need to. You need to take yourself away from that fear. And how do you build knowledge? You must ask for it. You must test for it. That, that's why, you know, where the Bible you know, talks about panting for God. It says, as the deer panted for water. If you don't pant for knowledge, you are not going to get knowledge. You need to pant for knowledge. Fear is an inappropriate language of instruction. Pant for knowledge. That's how to get knowledge. When you're done in this conference, you ask questions. What more can I do? There is no one conference that will deliver to you what it is that you need to raise a king. Raising a king takes a lot. When you want to build a mansion, you build, you, you bring in a lot of people to put in a lot of things together. When you want to build a shanty, you don't need nobody. You don't need no knowledge. You don't need no principles. Shanties are things that you just go on the side and just put it together. A catch. Anybody can build a shanty. The choice is yours. Do you want to build a shanty or do you want to build a mansion? If you want to build a mansion, then you need to think how people who build mansions think. You need to think who are the people that must be in this setting to build mansions within. Your child is either a king or a servant. There, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, um, in between when it comes to parenting. It's either you come hard or you don't come at all. There's no in between. Even Jesus said, I hate people who are lukewarm. Is it that you are hot or you're cold? You ask parents, you say, what do you, I don't really know. I don't really know. I, I don't know what it is that you're supposed to do. I don't know how to teach my children sex education. I don't, and you have 13 year olds and you're giving such excuses. With all of this knowledge that is everywhere, littered everywhere, free knowledge, paid knowledge. <laughs> I usually say humorously to parents, 
If you don't pay today, you will pay tomorrow. In that way, you do the time. You do the time. I've seen parents do the time over and again. You cannot run away from doing the time. You will do the time at some point. You will either do it when your child is dead. I have seen people who are still bailing out their boys. Number two is skills. It takes me to skills. Stop bailing your boy children. Stop bailing them out. Let them learn to how to actually walk through dangerous things carefully. How to do dangerous things carefully. That's the only way people learn. That's how boys learn. The heart of being a man is in responsibility. Stop taking away the place of responsibility from your sons. It's very easy to bear your male children. I tell you, women, I'm talking to you. It's very easy to bear your male children. I, I have male child and I know what I'm talking about. It's very easy to say, hey, I don't want my child to suffer. I, I don't want the place of skills. How much skills do you have? How much skills do you have? You're building your son today. You will build them forever. I've seen people that have been built. People I grew up with. They have been built till today. Their parents are still building them. You build your son out from a simple he fell and you did not allow him to stand up for himself. You will build him for life. You know, we've been shouting this thing and people look at us and say, what are you saying? Oh, there's this, 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 and all of that. Let your boy child learn to do dangerous things carefully. That's the only place they learn. Yeah, my child cannot, oh, things are bad. Oh, they cannot, oh, oh, did, did, did. oh, they cannot walk from here to here. Oh, they're, they're going to kidnap. We have taken away the place. We have taken away the place and the ability of what we should be doing in parenting. And we have given, we have given God the responsibility of parenting. Then we've taken protection from God. Who the, who the hell do you think you are to think that you have the ability to protect a human being? We don't even know where to place our faith in God on. When you ask a parent, have you read a book? Say, hey, no, God is the one that parents children. Unfortunately, God will never parent a child for you. God promises of protecting our children. He doesn't promise of parenting. He doesn't promise of parenting. And that's why when you're done bailing your children, God, no matter how much God loves you, go and ask King Dave. He's there. Go and ask Pastor Lee. He's there. Go and ask them. They will tell you. That it wasn't about being loved by God. It wasn't about praying. They build their male children. And till tomorrow, the examples, the scriptures are given to us for us for discernment, for learning, for us to actually be able to reveal, to revive. Very important. You know, whenever people ask me, why are you so passionate about not building a male child? I'm, I'm, I'm putting up a work, you know, inspired by a friend who told me that the worst person you can build is a male child. And that's the truth. Allow your male children to be male children. You're shielding them from responsibility. You're feminizing them. They're not women, they're men. Let them be men. When I'm in the house, I have a 12-year-old son. When I'm in the house and my husband is not home, he assumes the responsibility. I ask him, are you sure the door is locked? I'm, I'm supposed to be jumping up and down with a 12-year-old. Are you guys kidding me? We have, we have, some of us have 15 year olds and, and we're the ones running everywhere in the home, doing everything. We're raising boys who have no outcome of responsibility. None. None. Today we'll pay for jump. Tomorrow we'll pay for school admission. Next day we pay for job. And then we'll come and find one boy. A few days ago, there was a parent. The parent, the, the boy had been doing drugs for so many years. And the parents that came and said, ah, they are looking for a good girl. A good girl that they will marry to their son. You know, maybe when he marries this good girl, he'll stop doing drugs. Continue giving your children. Your girls are rehabilitation centers. Continue. My own children and the parents in the inner circle, we have decided. We're not giving. We're no longer doing. We're not doing with you. If you want, keep it, let keep your children. Let them be doing whatever it is that they want to do. We are not giving. Uh, our own. In a second, parents said that when you come, you, they will they will need to satisfy you. Who are you? What not parenting lesson do you know? They will do ACE test for you. They will do trauma bonding. They will do everything. It will shock you. 
the movement we are creating is a movement of parents who are serious and only serious. We're not giving you. Yes. Like, we're not. Don't if you don't raise your boys, they, they will be on their own forever. And you continue to buy them to become irresponsible. We're not interested. Raise your children with skills. Let your children be skilled. Let your child to be able to go out on the street, be able to navigate their world. Stop raising children who are foolish virgins. Parents come to me and they tell me things like, oh, I, I want my child, I, I want my child to, to be well behaved. Well, my child, righteousness is not the only attribute of God. Can we stop this nonsense? Holiness is not the only attribute of God. God has other attributes. There are other attributes of God. God is an excellent God. Why are we raising children who are mediocre? Why are we raising children who can do nothing? And yet to say, oh, children of God, children of God. What are you talking about? If your child is a child of God, mediocrity should be far from your children. I was sharing one of those days on our social media handle, and I, I was sharing how the twins started cooking, you know, um, at the age of 10. And people were like, ah, I, uh, it's so risky. The world is so, how would they do it and all of that? Oh, this one, continue. But yeah, tomorrow, you want to marry a daughter that is domesticated so that your son can be watching TV and my daughter will be running around. It's a lie. I will build, I will build the kind of wealth that will make my daughter not to go anywhere. She will just sit down. She doesn't need to. She does not need to. We're not, we're not doing. I have made that decision. I'm not even going to allow my children to just be going all around looking for whoever. It won't happen. It will not happen. Take your children to go to camp, your male children. Say, no, uh, there's a lion there. A lion is going to carry them. Which lion? Where's the lion? There's no lion anywhere. You are afraid because you don't know what to do and you don't know how to do it. Let your children build skills. You have 12 year olds who can cook, who can, who can make their bed, who can do anything, who cannot keep the home, nothing. You do everything for your child. And you think it's love? <laughs> We're asking for information. It's a principle, knowledge, skills. They are principles of parenting. They are principles of parenting. Don't get it twisted. Somebody humorously said to me, Oh, my son is going to marry your daughter because my son, you know, it's um, your daughter is actually really very together, uh, everything together. I said, No, it will, it will not happen. She will look for her tribe, somebody who is also very together, systematic, well raised. It's not going to happen. You, you think I'm, I'm, I'm doing building all of the knowledge so that I'll just sit down and somebody will just come and double cross me like that? How? How? You don't want to do the work, but you want the dividends. Value system. Number three principle, value system. The reformed parent, you must go back to your value system. You must go back to your value system. We have parents today. What is the value system? I was saying at the beginning of this session that if it was Bob Risky that was doing this session, there would be fire everywhere. 1.5 1, 1. million views. That's where our value system is. You are on you. If you tell a parent, oh, go and buy a book. Ah, the book is expensive 3,000 naira, very expensive. But you buy a PS5, you buy a you buy everything. Don't, 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 um, don't misunderstand me. I have PS whatever in my home, there's no gadget that doesn't exist in my home. But you must be able to understand where you place, where whatever it is, what is important is placed in your value system. The moment you come into the academy, the first thing I tell you is that you will buy books. You will buy, you will create a budget to buy books. When your budget, where something that is going to reform you is, is smaller than frivolous things, there's something wrong with that budget. Your value system will show in the things that you do, in what you say is more important. You tell parents, come and register for a course. They say, ah, I don't really have money. 50,000 is too much, but you buy a week. Or 500k. You buy shoes, 10 shoes on vacation, not one book for your children. Hey, what are you doing? You think you are deceiving anybody? It's not us. You're not deceiving anybody. Your priorities are wrong. And it's going to show the result will be very evident. The result will be very evident. It's not me, it's not a cost. That's how life is. Parenting is seed time and harvest. There is seed. There is no, the seed has a time. The harvest doesn't have a time. If you miss the time to plant, 
you will not have anything to harvest. But if you get the planting time right, your harvest is everlasting. Everlasting. What is it? What are you sowing into today? It will show. <laughs> it will show. Your shoe will shine. Your face will shine. It will show. There's no, there's no this thing about it. It will be seen. The world will see that you paid the price. The world will see that you pay. If you didn't pay a price, the world will see that you didn't pay a price. The world will see that you didn't pay a price. Value system. What kind of value system does your sons have? Because it's the kind of value system that you have that they will have. What happens in your home? You're drinking alcohol, dancing, this one. You think that the boy will not go and try. He will. He will. The boy is looking at you. Fathers, get involved. Fathers, oh, get involved. You are not doing us. Yeah, if your if your, if your son, your 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 son is coming to marry my daughter, the father is not involved. A wrong, it will not happen. I will not. Except except I'm dead. My daughter even knows. She knows. She knows what it is to look out for. It won't happen. Fathers, get involved. There's a role you need to play in the life of your son that no other person can play. It. Dear mother, I don't have a husband. I don't, the, the husband, the father is not there. Get someone to play that role. The male figure role is a, is a, is a key role in the life of a child. A parent who is ready to change the status quo must be one who is ready to review where they are on this cardinal point. You need to review where you are on knowledge. You need to review where you are on building skills. An unskilled child is a body to you and the society at large. If you raise an unskilled son, he will wreck you. He will, he will make it. If you want, build all of the mansions in the world. When you are gone, he will mess it up. We've seen it over and over again. An unskilled child is a body to you now and even the society at large. Stop raising unskilled children. It's not in the power. It's not in, if I tell you now, what do you know about parenting? You're going to tell me, oh, spare the rod and spoil the child. That's the, only, that's the only thing you know about parenting. It's not in the, it's not in the, you want to fight, you want to know. Part of one of the things that reformation did was on the value that it was placed on the heart. When the church reformation happened, there was value placed on the heart. Martin Luther King was pushing for value placed on the heart and not just the politics in the church. Not just the show that you're doing. And what was this about? It was about purification. Purification of the system. Purification of the system. A reformed parent is someone who has changed and become a better parent. That's who a reformed parent is. The good news is, no matter where you are, your parenting journey, you can make a U-turn. I like the way my pastor says it, Bishop David Doyedebo. He said, no matter how you want to reach a lorry from Abuja, and you face the roads to Makodi, going straight, you will never get to a lorry. Until you make a U-turn on that road and face the road towards Lokoja, that's when you will get a U-turn. So no matter how far you have gone on a wrong route, it doesn't matter what people will say. It doesn't matter what it is that is. What, what is important is how you can make a U-turn and come and start again. Parenting starts with you. You see all of these things that I've reeled? You cannot give the knowledge you don't have. You cannot teach the skill you don't know. You cannot, you cannot give the value system that you don't. If you're parenting on rules, oh, it's about rules, 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 no values. Your children, your children will never, never be able to actually buy into values. When you raise your children with values and leave rules, they will be able to create rules that will be able to actually make meaning to them as individuals. You can make a U-turn today. You can start again today. But one of the things that will be judged, that, that you will be judged with, is the things that you have heard. The things that you have heard. 
I like the way Buka says it. What you fear, what you fear, what you hear will determine what you hear. I mean, what you, what you, what you fear, what you hear will determine what you fear. It is from what you hear that's what you will, that's what will determine what you're going to be fearing. What are you afraid of? You are afraid because you do not have knowledge. You are afraid because you do not understand what to do. There are principles. There are templates. I had the privilege of researching on the Olu of worry, and I researched on his life, and I researched on his system, on the way he was raised. I took interest because we are age mates, and I looked at where he schooled, how he schooled, what happened to him, and I saw that when kings raised their children, they raised them with the template. You are the one raising your child anyhow. Do you know there are children who are outlayers today who are being actually being parented to take over the world? So is it that there is a there is that there are kings or there are servants? The, the world needs equilibrium for, for it to work. So there must be servants. The choice is yours. I tell people I'm not forcing anybody anymore. You choose, but my children are going to marry from the tribe of kings. They won't marry servants. That's it. So you choose, you know, you see all those things that they do in Nigerian movie. They say, oh, and the prince now married a house girl. They got, it, 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 you know, they happen. Don't kid yourself. Don't, kid. even in the Bible, when they were sent to actually go and marry, they said, go and marry from your tribe. Go and marry from your tribe. And the tribe here will be the tribe of people who understand what it is to intentionally raise a male child. I want to give a male child as a gift to the world. I want to give a male child as a gift to, to parents so that when they when when people see a male child, give let it be a let it be a, a let it bother you that you see boys just behaving anyhow. My my son is going to be a one million yard husband material. One million yard. One million yard. I will be collecting bride price, groom price from you. I go collect groom price. The one I'm raising my son, child, I will call. Even now, when parents say, oh, is your son that will marry her daughter? I look at and say, nah, I will collect groom price. This one is raised the king. Yes. I've had the privilege to, to, to look through all of the people who have raised people who are reformed. Elon Musk um, and all of the other people that I've, I've been able to look through. And I found one thing. These children were killed from day one. One of the but one principles that actually they were given were the skills that they built. The skill of being independent. Independence is a gift that you can gift to your son. Stop raising sons who can thrive. And that's why I'm going to be closing with the story of the parable of the ten virgins. I was, I'm writing a book called Raising an Independent Thinking Child. And yesterday when I was writing, the, the Holy Spirit opened my mind to the system, you know, the 10 virgins. In that conversation, it was said that all of them came at the same pace. Do you know what made the difference? It's not that the other foolish virgins were not, you know, they were not prepared. They were. They were prepared. They were prepared. But the problem is that they didn't understand the eventualities. They didn't understand that things can get dangerous. They didn't understand that they need to prepare in case if something goes bad. They had extra oil. The other foolish ones too didn't have extra oil. Their parents was only interested in raising a good child. A virgin is a good child. So he was well behaved. Their parents were more interested in raising a good child, go to school, pass, nothing. And they were not skilled. They were not able to think. They were not wise. You can raise a child who is good, and yet your good child can thrive. A thriving child is not just a good child. A thriving child is a child who can think. Who can think. Can your child think? Those five virgins who were wise, what, what, separated them from the foolish one was the extra. What is the extra in your parenting? When people say, but we turned out okay, I say, okay, it's not good enough. That's mediocrity. My God is not a mediocre God. My God is an excellent God. I don't know what the one you serve. I serve an excellent God. What is that thing? What is the difference? What is the difference? What is the difference that your child is going to make? Does your child have access to the extra oil.
does your child know when to take an extra oil? That's what will make the difference. What is that extra you're doing to prepare your child for the world? A thriving child is a child who can think, not a child who can behave well, not a child who has passed his hands. I've seen a lot of people come out tops of the class and cannot thrive. Remember, parenting is first about you because you cannot give what you do not have. It is what you learn. The, the capacity where your children will be able to go, where your children will be able to get to will depend on the bank of knowledge that you have. That's the capacity that you'll be able to. You can't deliver above the capacity that you have. Seek knowledge today and become a reformed parent. Thank you very much. Um, really appreciate. Um, Ibuka, are you there? Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. For being part of this conversation, if you have questions, I don't know if there is room for questions, um, but we're here and we're waiting. Thank you so much, Ibuka and Ruth. Um, this, this was, I enjoyed myself having this conversation today. Hey! Fire. Hey! Fire. Hey, hey, Fire hey, 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 hey. I'm speaking. Hey, hey. Give up. Let's just, the conference is it's over. over. It's over. What? Let's share the group. What? It's over. <laughs> Where are the parents from the inner ah. circle? We are not seeing this fire. Ah, if you are not yet in the inner circle, hey. you are doing yourself some oh. good, bad, wrong. I was just screaming and what? shouting and shouting and shouting and shouting. Oh I God. have not heard this I, kind I, I, of I, I, a I, I, thing before. Oh hey! God. Hey! I don't know where to start from. What? I'm asking myself, are you sure I've, I've, have I heard Wendy before? Me, Honestly. No. I said, no, no, no. no. Like Wendy I've before. not heard Wendy before. Oh, what? what are we ah. looking for? This is revival. This is revival. This is revival. This is the revival we are talking about. Fire everywhere. Fire. Thank you, Coach Wendy, for sharing. In fact, you have just said ah, everything we need to know. Thank you, Mama Katiza. We have questions. I need to go back and, um, and look at this over the I'm night. Wonder. I'm supposed that. You know, you finish it until you ask yourself, what have I been hearing? Have I heard this thing before? You know, like, you know someone said, Coach the Vex. Coach, coach the Vex. I'm asking day. myself, do I actually know parenting? Ah. Like, this is, ah. if you're not in the inner circle, circle, you are nowhere. You are nowhere. <laughs> this is how we receive it hot, hot every day. What? You cannot, I would like having my beautiful what? daughter come and give one boy that is. We are not giving, no. We are not and, giving. Uh, <laughs> uh, I like what you said about uh, you know mindset. Uh, you now marry one house girl. Yeah. Uh, 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 the princess married the house boy. Never hey, Buka, I was wow. I was reading about Kate Middleton and the hey. Prince of England, and I was reading how Kate Middleton was prepared to actually meet through the prince. She was prepared to be in the palace. She was hey. prepared. You prepare your children to be in the palace. You don't yes. assume that they will be in the palace. You prepare them. Can we hey. stop assuming all of these things and begin hey. to get to work? Preparation. I will not finish preparing. You said that there's one, one um, housemaid. Uh, you might just, uh, my son now saw one housemaid and now uh, God. It will happen. Uh, if you say I'm racist, uh, it's okay. Say whatever mm. it is you want to say, but I will hey. not. <laughs> Which table are we going to break tomorrow now? All the table. <laughs> Coach, like oh, I was asking my myself, have I heard, have I heard you before? Have I heard this kind of what am I doing? Like every day, you not say you just keep asking yourself, what what am I doing? Fire! And see, that's what I was saying, the parenting bishop. Like I've not heard words like it, this. It, it's is, just like this is revival. Living in a dream. This is reformation. What more do we need? Honestly, I can imagine the whole world listening and hearing this. Reality. Reality. We Reality. don't need any other thing other than this. Reality. We need to place our priority right. That's what are it. we doing? Uh, you're talking about books. Some parents buy pigs now, 7,000, 10,000 as a gold. And they yeah. can buy books for 2,000. Yeah. On a pair of shoes. On a pair yeah. of shoes. Yeah. Because the child cries. And we say, no, they can't read. <laughs> they don't like reading. 
they don't like reading. They don't a parent, a parent once told me that they tear all the books. So I asked the parent, uh, your designer uh, bag, you know they tear. They, 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 uh, when they tear, you know they buy another one. No. You buy a designer bag for 100 k and you don't want to buy a book for a child to tear. Let them hey, tear the damn thing. Let them tear it. Hey, like, it's, I don't know what to say. We need, that's why we're having irresponsible boys. We are barely yes. out. We are not raising boys. And a man cannot be raised outside of responsibility. We you can't. Responsible because we are bailing them out from where they are. He's a boy. He's a boy. Let them just rest. No. Just be playing. Play, play. So my daughter will now go and become a slave and then you will be watching TV. How? And go and watch football and come back by 1 a.m. and leave their family at home. When he becomes a man, you expect a miracle. You don't expect a miracle. Exactly. You expect a miracle. I don't have to like this. This is not the way we are in our family. Our family line. How? I'm the one that raised him. I'm the one. We need to change this. And no, this is if somebody feeling the way I'm feeling, please, we are at the fire. In fact, nobody has questions. You have answered all this. The question is there still any question? Is there still any question? We are parenting on assumption. We can't keep bailing out and expect responsibility. Look at what is happening in the world. Men are not rising up, and it's upbringing, it's foundation. That is what we are teaching them. That is women are taking over every day. Women are taking over every day. Every minute. And so I see the way it's happening because the girls, when they wake up, they say, "You must clean. You must do this. Yes. You must do that." So they were already responsible boys. Who they've learned how to work? The girls understand. So they grow up working. I, they, during this holiday, my son and some of my friends' children were taken to actually go and do some kind of internship in a yeah. in a place where they needed to do plastering, do all of those things. A yeah. parent, you know, said to me, "I said, ah, this is too much suffering." I said, "Let him suffer now. Suffer he needs to suffer. They suffer. This suffer. <laughs> he needs it now. He needs to be able to keep it up. You don't survive without suffering. This suffer. This thing you can't hey. suffer. You need to. Do you know right <laughs> in that internship?" The supervisor was able to pick out the children yeah. who actually are responsible at home and the children who are not. Yes. The moment my son walked into a school and spent one time, all of the yeah. teachers reached out to my father, uh, to my husband, <laughs> and said to him, how did you raise this boy? He is the most responsible boy in the whole stream. You how are we raising, how are we raising children who cannot, who cannot be picked hey. out as responsible? We want them to just we go and be first. Mm -mm. We just want them to be first. They, they will be, and they, you know the good thing when you raise responsible and skilled children, they pass this exam. We are we are running. To, 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 we, are, we are running at. They we are running at. My son is an early at. student, anytime, any day. They will pass their exams because they understand responsibility and diligence. Come Crazy. on, they will pass. Why are they not passing? Because we, we have taught them bailouts. So even in exam, the boys are looking for bailouts. Yes, of course, they want to know. Bailing out, bailing out. Of course. People will say, "Why well, our girls are the ones working?" We are teaching the girls to work. That's why they grow up and they're That's responsible. They are yeah. working. If we That's begin to do the same thing and begin to inculcate responsibility, and the boy will need it much more because responsibility. Much. The is boy more. needs much more. Yeah. You see much this church we are packing for girls. The boys need it more than the, the girls. Responsibility is manhood. You can't separate responsibility from manhood. That Never. is the of manhood. We need reformation. Never. We need we reformation. Need we, we need, need it. Reformation. You and, do and, and, and we are the Martin Luther King in parenting oh, yes. today. And we're yes. leading this reformation for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. We are not letting you rest. You will hear us. And that's what you are going to tell other parents come and watch this. Every parent in your school must come back. We will scream. We will shout if, if we need to yes. shout. If the parents in your school are not safe, your children are not safe. They are not. If your yes. parents in the children are not so you must ask Martin Luther King. We are saying every parent, where are you? And like what you said, if it's Bobrisky or one person that comes up now, two million views, everybody that's everybody it. This is value. This is value. That, that's value it. For one that. Gold. Value what, for one of the things Ebuka, one of the things I tell parents is if you're if you're not building a circle that's going to help your children, your children will drown. And I heard you say that your circle will determine your celebration. 
And I yes. love that quote. In fact, it was my highlight for today. Your circle will determine your celebration. There is nobody in my circle that is not learning what I'm learning. Yes. If you're my friend, you're close to me, you're in the inner circle. Every single yes. one of my friends is listening to me today. Yes. Close yes. to me. My children sleep in my house. They don't have any problem. I don't have a problem sending my children to their house because they yes. understand the templates. We are working yes. with the same templates. Yes. There's a template. So yeah, you, you can't just be doing what you want and then you just be doing, you just leave your children and you just leave your friends. You just say, eh, they don't want, I will be doing my own thing. It will affect your children yes. eventually. Yes. Please, if you are not the inner circle, if you are not following us on ah. on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, go and follow. If I am in the inner circle, I am learning. We are in the inner circle. Quick as it, <laughs> as it, because nobody will come and parent my own child. I'm a coach. Yes, I'm a coach. Yes. Does not mean your child will grow well. No, 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 no. You will not, though. That's not. That is not how we are struggling. Follow. Follow. <laughs> all, all of right. us are learning, and we are all parenting. Somebody said, I don't think I have coach. I've had coach like this. No. Oh, this is information. This is Martin Luther. I've had so many times. Like okay. this. Hey! God! <laughs> This is ah, fire. Please, ah. every parent to share this, everybody yes. in your circle must come and watch. This is reformation. This is reformation. Mama, let's keep pushing this message. Yes. Let's keep firing. No, we, we, must, we, must, we, we must continue. We must continue. I we tell parents, continue. let your children to go to camps. Let them let them yes. attend these conferences. You know, yes. and Antetima yes. runs physical camp. So parents will say, I don't want my yes. children to sleep outside of the home. Yes. I'm looking at them like this. Really? Mama, really? The lion is actually in their home. The lion their lion is, lion is in the, the, the home, not even outside. It's in the it's home. In the home. home that they are, they are being destroyed. I'm telling you. Under your roof, we don't understand. Under your roof. Under your roof. We need to rise up to responsibility. Honestly. We can't separate manhood from from the boys. You can't separate responsibility no, can't. from manhood. No. We can't no. separate. No, we can't. That is separable. We can't. we can't separate responsibility from manhood. That is, and any boy, we can say, oh, it's my son. Mm. He's a boy. He's our son. He's the head of the tree. Let him just say, what will mm. he eat? And mm. that's all you keep eating and building for But when he grows too, you have seen the father build for He's still down and eating you, you 100 meat. What's the mm. for that? Oh, he will grow and do the mm. same thing. Let's mm. wake up. Wake up. Let's wake up. The lion we are looking for is in our home. Some of us are the lions ourselves. Eating our I'm children. telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> Really? You know what happened mm. to Samson? Yes. They say a yes. should not come on his head. Some of us are yes. the race of shaping yes. the destinies of our children. Yes. Some of yes. us are the yes. race of shaping the purpose of our children. And mm. we are the race mm. as a parent. Our mouth, mm. you know, our life, our character, the way we are raising our children, and that destroying or, or building mm. them. All right. Mm. Parent, intentional parenting is not permissiveness at all. Oh, no, at no, all. no. And we must wake up. As in, mm. let's go and choose. Somebody say, I have a question. What is the question? Drop the question. We are not seeing your question. You are saying you mm. have a question, but we can't see your question. All right? Thank you so much. Thank you amazing so much time. The amazing coach. Hey! Andy, you yes. Said, Thank you, man. We are pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time. Thank you. We just so parenting much. apostle, bishop, hey. mama cathedral. Of okay, we'll see that question. Century. Let's just take that one. Okay, and so go. we have a question. He said churches are always filled with women. Many of them seem to be leading frontline. What exactly can we do to, to tackle the system to break up that pattern? That is the one and only question we are taking. Mommy, how okay. can we break that pattern? Okay, so one of the things that I have seen in all of these churches being filled with women is that we are we are we are replicating a system that we saw. A lot of women think that. They are the priest of the home. You are not. A woman is not created the priest of the home. People have told me, oh, what if when the man is not rising up, what do you do? Don't you rise up? Yes, I agree. But a man, a man is the priest of the home. And we, we, we need to start teaching our children, even if you cannot reform the fathers to take off the office of the priest of the home. You need to start teaching our male children that priesthood is actually for them. That's part of the, you know, the intentionality we are talking about. We need to begin to give them the office of priesthood in their homes. Women are not the priests. The men are the priests. And we need to change this narrative. How can we change it? We need to actually begin to 
you know, put a lot of things. We can we can start helping the fathers. We have a lot of fathers' conferences that run all of the things that fathers should be doing. But while we're at it, let us raise our children. Let us raise our sons to do the thing differently. We know that we have mentors. We have, you know, um, people like Coach Buka who are mentoring boys. We know that there's a lot of gap in fatherhood that will not lie to you. The gap we have in fatherhood is so huge. And people are like Coach Buka, them are filling up, you know, this gap. Please. Link them up. Let your children understand the, the the responsibility of priesthood as a man. It is an anomaly to have the woman lead the home when it comes to you know the things of God. It's an anomaly. It's not a normal thing, and that's why in the Bible it was all recorded the gods of my fathers, the gods of my fathers, because it is an office for the husband. The priesthood is an office for the father. So that that would be my recommendation of what we can do. Okay, I don't know if it's just me. And I, I think um I wasn't hearing Kochebuka. Okay, yes. Somebody let's close with this question. Somebody said I have domestic staff and my kid hardly find any work to do. What do I do? Mama, you need to answer this question. You have domestic staff. Why I grew up with domestic staff. Don't kid yourself. I grew up with domestic staff. One of the things that my father said to us was the staff work for me. They don't mm. work for you. Mm. So okay. I started going to the market when I was eleven. They were domestic. We had two house helps. I can't forget. When I come home and I say, I oh, want the house help to you. My father say, why? Did you employ anyone? You didn't. So you need to begin to separate what that is. I can't even say, oh, don't have domestic staff. You don't need to. No, you can. But you need to be hands-on if you must have domestic staff. You need to be hands-on. I need to be able to separate it. And you need to be, you know, pay attention. I particularly knew that I couldn't manage it. I've not had a domestic staff since my children turned seven. Is on purpose. I decided I wasn't going to. It was a choice. However, there's nothing bad with having domestic staff. My parents had domestic staff. We were able to learn independent, but you will need to do extra. It means that yeah. if you, if a parent who is not doing that, you know, is putting hundred percent, you will need to put in two hundred and fifty percent all the way. So you need to actually get a domestic staff to understand what you are doing. Then you will be able to now help your children also get involved. Let your mm. children understand that the domestic staff are working for you, not for them. It's one lesson that I picked from my father. The domestic cat works for me, not for you. You didn't employ them. All right? So let your children be able to make their bed, cook their food. Let the domestic staff serve you and your husband. Let the children serve themselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. <laughs> Church has closed. <laughs> Church has closed. Let us share the grace. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Everyone, can are not for 20 or Logan, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, everywhere. Please, LinkedIn, let's follow. Join the inner circle and come and thank me later. later. Join later. and come and thank me later. Go and buy her books. Go and buy books. Go and watch our videos on YouTube. You will have sleepless night because you'll be burning with fire throughout the night. I know what I know the fire I'm burning with here now. Tomorrow we are back again at 6 p.m. West African yes, time. Yes. And we are going to have an amazing personality come to talk to the boys that will blow your mind. And after that, at 7 p.m., we are having and Dr. Jerome joining us all the way from US. He's the founder, World Day of the Boy Child and International Men's Day Worldwide. He's the awesome. founder and is joining us to share what led to this. Why are you doing this? What is passion? What have you seen around the world with boys and men? He's going to be mm. sharing why this vision. And we are having happy. Well, guys, hey, another fire tomorrow. Fire fire. Don't miss <laughs> tomorrow from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. We are loaded. And the fire mm. took us to almost 8, uh, uh, 9, 8, 8, 8 today. And if you leave me, I will say, yeah, keep hearing. I'm not tired of hearing Coach Wendy. I can hear you all through the night and I won't blink my eyes. The fire, people keep asking me, who is this fire you speak with? I said, just look for my mama. My mama. <laughs> and you will see lion begets lion. Now, if a lion does not come and give them to a goat. All right? What you hear the time is what you become. What you hear yes, the time is what you fear. In the inner circle, yes. no fear, no rage, because mm -hmm. you know what, there is a way to the city. Everyone yes. has to stop following the same There is a way to the city. There is a way to the city. Yes, 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 yes. They are back tomorrow. Share. Tell everybody that was not here. Tomorrow, we want to have over 1,000 people watching. Tell the world. 
Let them join. Those that didn't watch, let them go and watch the replay. Thank you, Coach Wendy. We are thank grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining, everyone. Remember, if you don't pay today, you will pay. You will, you pay, will pay tomorrow. tomorrow. Either, Either way, way, you pay the price. There must be a pay. There must be a pay. Thank you so Let's much. Let's take responsibility for everything that we have heard. I told you, it's not enough to just hear. Do something with what you yes. have heard. That yes, is when yes, yes, your yes. child will turn out well. Oh, yes. It's not enough to hear. You can hear and nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you must do mm -hmm. something you with what heard. you have heard. I'm going to do something mm -hmm. with what I've I am going to do something. I'm going to parade a king different. Mm -hmm. Because I have mm -hmm. learned mm -hmm. something different. Mm -hmm. so because there is a way to the city. The, 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 the labor of the foolish way to death. Because yes, they do not know, yes, do not know yes, how to know. get to okay. the city. There okay. is a way. It's a Bible that said it, not me. It's there Bible, is a way. It's Bible. It's Bible. It will worry if you, you if you have to. Yes, so if you want to come and talk to me, come and join the inner circle. Come and talk to me, come to the inner circle. Yes, we can keep going on and on and on and on. Thank, thank you, Ebukan and 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 Ruth. Amazing, amazing. See you guys on Saturday. I look forward to it. See you on Saturday. Another fun on Saturday. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, coach. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. It's been amazing. Are you pumped? I'm pumped. Are you pumped? Show us what it means to be pumped. Come on. Come on. All right. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you again tomorrow, 6 p.m. Thank you. Share with everybody. Follow on our social media handles. Have a blessed night. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you.